Wang Qiang was a serial killer that resided in Budayan Town, Quandian Manchu Autonomous County, Liaoning, China. He's been deemed one of the worst serial killers and rapists in Chinese history. While making this video, photos of Wang were difficult to come by due to him either not liking photos taken of him or the photos that were taken have been forever lost. Qiang grew up in the small village of Kaoyan, Liaoning City for a short part of his life, lived with both his mother and father. As a child, he grew up with an abusive father who spent most of his time drinking, gambling, and overall being a bad parental figure. It seemed that the only parental bond he had was with his mother who he was very close to. Unfortunately, she couldn't take his father's abuse and left when Kiang was only five years old. This forced Kiang to live with his abusive father and deal with whatever havoc came his way. This went on until Kiang was finally sent to live with his grandparents at the age of 10. And by the age of 13, even his grandparents didn't want to see him anymore. So they enrolled him into a school something that his father had deprived him of while he was living with him. Maybe Kiang could finally make connections with people who cared for him at his new school. Though, this was not the case. Kiang was severely bullied because word got out that his father was a drunk, a gambler, and had recently gone to prison. It seemed that school wasn't going to help him escape either. He ended up dropping out due to the abuse he was now experiencing at his new school. This decision didn't sit well with his grandparents though. His grandparents ended up resenting him for this decision and began making comments like, if other people commit suicide, why don't you? Safe to say, this didn't sit well with Kiang. So at the age of 15, he decided to leave his home and began living on his own. This was harder for him than he expected and to survive, he began stealing. His petty crimes would soon catch up to him because in 1991, he would be jailed for four years for robbery. During his time in prison, he began to long for his mother. And in an attempt to reach out to her, he wrote letters to her from his cell in jail. Unfortunately, these letters would never be returned. And he thoroughly believed that, just like everyone in his life, even his mother never truly cared about him. This was a turning point for Kiang. With no real reason to live a righteous life, his mind sank into darkness. Kiang would be released in 1995, and he started up right where he left off, robbing and surviving. He would eventually evolve from petty thief to serial killer. According to Kiang, one day he stumbled upon a couple kissing under a tree. As he was used to, he snuck up on the couple, beat them, robbed them, and began raping the girl. Kiang explained that he wasn't thinking of killing anyone. But when the boy began begging for his life, pleading, please don't kill me, I still have my parents, it stirred up a maelstrom of emotions within him because before he knew it, he began stabbing the boyfriend to death. 
Since Kiang never had loving parents, or anyone who loved him for that matter, he felt a rage that made him hate the boy for begging. After this initial event, Kiang became addicted to this vile way of life. And this was the beginning of his murderous rampage. Keep in mind, Kiang was not a menacing looking individual. He only stood at 5'1 and was said to be of a slender build. But even someone as unthreatening as him can have a huge advantage over someone who isn't expecting danger. And in true predatory fashion, Kiang used the element of surprise to overpower his victims. When you think about it, no one expects their last day on earth. So, using this to his advantage, Kiang would beat, rape, and rob his victims, mostly women, though he had recounted once killing six couples within a span of three days. Kiang was very active. Across eight and a half years, Kiang would amass a kill count of 45 verified victims, though speculations would put his kill count at around 60 plus. His depravity didn't stop there. He was also convicted of raping a total of 10 people, and it was discovered he even went as far as performing necrophilia on some of his victims' corpses. Before he eventually was caught, he met a woman in 2000, which he married and had one child with. This had a major impact on Kiang because he apparently vowed to never kill, rob, or rape again. Unfortunately, this was short-lived because just three years later, in 2003, his wife left him. Kiang was left with nothing yet again. This flung Kiang into a relapse and he began killing, robbing, raping, and enacting his rage on his victims. He recounts one night he stumbled upon a family camping in a village in Kaoyan, China. A mom, a dad, and a daughter. He snuck up to their campsite and using a blunt object that can only be described as a yoke he began to bludgeon the family to death. In his ordinary fashion, he began looking for valuables, but to his disappointment, the family didn't have anything he wanted. So instead, he decided to take the lifeless body of the daughter and had his way with her. Kiang would relish in his deeds and would even hang around the crime scenes to observe how the authorities would try to solve his heinous crimes. This all came to an end in 2003, when a friend of Kiang, who had helped him in numerous robberies, revealed Kiang's litany of murders as a way to reduce his own sentence. Apparently, Kiang confided in this friend and he recounted all the horrific details of his secret life this prompted the authorities to quickly locate Kiang and arrest him. The Shangyang police eventually caught Kiang while he was out fishing and finally brought an end to this monster. From this point, the police would interrogate Kiang over a course of a year and a half, which would result in Kiang confessing to 45 murders starting in January 1995 through July 2003. This would result in Kiang attaining the nickname number 54 Super Killer. He would declare that he became so good at killing that it would only take him 20 minutes to rob, kill, and ultimately rape and then be on his way. His heinous crimes even prompted his defense lawyer to stating, I hate him to the bone, but lawyers have an obligation to provide legal aid. 
very dedicated to his trade. Kiang revealed that his routine would consist of going to work, killing, going home, and then sleeping. Kiang would eventually lead authorities to the sites of some of his victims' remains across the period he was incarcerated. During his four-day trial that began on March 23, 2005, it only took the jury nine hours to deliver a guilty verdict. Kiang was promptly sentenced to execution by shooting. And in November 2005, the monster known as Number 54 Super Killer was executed by a single bullet to the head. It's crazy to think that people that go through traumatizing events in their life can have completely different outcomes. Some would have turned the misfortune into a drive to be better, while Kiang decided that the only way to escape his pain was to cause it to others. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate every one of you. If you like the content, please leave a comment, a like, and subscribe because I will be posting three to five videos a week so you can have something interesting to listen to. With that being said, stay safe and until next time.